Hi and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the top five things in Blood Bowl 3 that I don't think work very well or that I don't like. And I'm going to say them now, move on, we're not going to talk about them again. So welcome back. Today we're going to go through those top five. So let's start with the nice and easy one. I'm going to talk about team development. So if we look at the game and the detail, one of the reasons we love playing Blood Bowl is the development of teams and the story and how you can give that mad position or that extra skill that turns them into an absolute wrecker. Or as we you know, if you give a skill to a block, big guy, pretty much can guarantees that they're gonna roll a one and die in the next match you play. But if we go over to the game, the thing that we're really struggling with at the moment is that development in detail. So this is the team that I started playing the campaign through and I've got a blodger here, that's my blitzer, he's leveled up and got dodge and, and that's pretty good. You can see I've managed to give them some detail. And I spent six PP, SPP on them. But I think the problem we've got is where we're playing online at the moment and playing against other people, we're struggling to really rack those SPP up and work through the game and that's going to really disappoint us. And is that SPP and the team's all going to get wiped at the end of the pre-season? which will be great because it leaves everyone in the same position, but also it's really gonna take away from the fun of having built up some of those teams and details. So that's gonna be a little bit sad. That's gonna be something that we're not gonna enjoy very much. So the number two for me is absolutely the competition and the competitive side of it. Blood Bowl is meant to be played in a league, in a tournament format and detail. And if we go into the competitions at the moment, we're really struggling to find too much in there. And a big shout out to the Bonehead podcast, uh, Discord and everyone that's joined that. We've actually got a ladder with a whole heap of teams in it already. And hopefully people can find games, get in there and start playing. Um, but that lack of really competitive ladder systems and details and that we're having to make that at the moment, that's a real disappointment. Um, I'm glad the community is trying to find a way around it. So let's keep doing it with that and going through it. So the number three is related very much to the teams and the skills. So number of you have seen that any skill that seems to interact during the turn, so shadowing or prehensile tail or something like that, it's either not working or it's going to crash the game. Um, and that's a real disappointment. On top of that, we haven't got all the skills in the game and the detail. So for those of you looking to put Juggernaut on your big guy, uh, I think you're going to be waiting till an update down the line. The skills part is another massive part of Blood Bowl and that's really disappointing that you can't go in, whack all your skills and detail there and go through. So these are the current skills that seem to be available. Are they all working? Are they not? Um, and chaos and mutation is absolutely the way to go for a lot of fun things. But if those skills are the ones that aren't working, is anyone going to play with those guys right now? So number four. Number four relates again to the team development and detail, and it's the star players. You've definitely seen star players played with if you've been on uh, a tournament or detail, and it's really difficult to find them unless you're setting up a team within the, the, the way Blood Bowl works at the moment. But the most important thing about star players in Blood Bowl 2020 is that they've all got a special rule. We've all played against Hack Flem in a tournament where he just grabs the ball from an, a player next to him and runs off with it. No dice rolling, Hack Flem doing what we think is Hack Flem things. Um, Griff, on the other hand, he gets an inbuilt reroll to go along with all the other skill rerolls he does. That's really important. That's in the roadmap. That's coming in the future, but it's not here now. So that's a big change for things and details. And then the other thing that I dislike and I'm going to just say this once and move on, is particularly for people as they're playing through the campaign. We've got this sponsors bit here. Now, 
you do not start Blood Bowl when you're learning it and suddenly find that you get half an in uh, the price induction for team rerolls, uh, an apothecary for 50%, star players for 50%, a wizard for 50%, or a plague doctor for 50%. That for me is absolutely fundamentally changing the way the inducements work. And yes, it's for the campaign, it's for the single player and working through, and it's getting people into the game. But I think it's also going to set people up thinking, oh, I can get that extra reroll really quickly. I can, I can use the petty cash to do it. I can get a star player in if I'm playing a team that's only 100k more than you. Well, they're going to get a bit of shock when we start playing online properly and we go through the detail of that. So that's the, uh, the, the area that's really uh, a little bit disappointing. Now, last not least, there's one thing that generally all of us in the community have moaned about, and you'll see it right up in the top hand corner of your screen here. And yes, it's warp stone. I've got the 1250 as I had the brutal edition and I've been generously given 250 more, which as a, a friend of mine will say, um, that really nice to get me an extra shoulder pad. So the game's not working well and there are issues with it, yet yeah, we've got a microtransaction store in detail. And let's be fair about this, this is absolutely publisher driven to get money back into the game. So yes, if you want to run a Chaos Renegades team and you want to have the reptile head, that's 75 warp stone. But it's 75 warp stone per player you want to use that on, it doesn't buy you that reptile head for all of it and detail through and you can see all of them so the black hawks um, the head let's and it's left shoulder and right shoulder that's going to really rack it up um, as we work through um, I think a decent team customization is going to be about 50 pounds um, so that I'm not going to talk about warpstone anymore in terms of the shop I'm not going to be clicking on this shop thing anymore in any way at all uh, me and the shop are not going to have any interaction and I think that's the best way for most people to stay away with it, particularly if you've got kids and you're playing with them. Do not let them go there. Don't go there in any way at all. So that's really where I am in terms of the game and the detail. Um, and I think that most people should stay away from those things. I'm going to try and not be negative about the game. I desperately want Blood Bowl 3 to work. It is desperately needing some updates and fixes. It is better than it was four days ago. It's better than it was two days ago. It's still not in a great shape. So what else do you really want to get off your chest and say? Stick it in the comments below and then let's try and move on as a community as the updates come through. Let's remember these guys are desperately trying to fix the game and we all really want it to be good. So let's hope next time we speak, Blood Bowl 3 is starting to get good. We're seeing some real developments in the way it works and we're starting to think that actually this is something that's going to work in the end. <laughs>